chapter 8, section 2. Um, this chapter might be my favorite chapter. Um, we're going to be talking about complex numbers and their trigonometric form. Another word for trigonometric form uh, is polar form. Okay, So in order to graph our complex numbers, we have to adjust our, um, our plane so that the vertical axis here is the imaginary axis and the horizontal axis is the real axis. So for example, the complex number 2 minus 3i, 2 is your real part, negative 3 is the imaginary part, and so you would graph it by finding 2 on the real axis and negative 3 on the imaginary axis, and this is the complex number graphed in this complex plane now. Okay. Now what's really important is each complex number determines a unique position vector. This is a, a position vector. The initial point's at the origin, and uh, this is your terminal point in quadrant number four. So each complex number determines a unique position vector, um, like this one. Um, so because every complex number determines a unique position vector, this geometric representation is the reason that every complex number, a plus bi, is called the rectangular form of a complex number. This is this is rectangular form, also known as standard form for a complex number. So rectangular form and standard form is the same thing. Okay? Check out our first example. Find the sum of the two given complex numbers, graph both of these numbers and their resultant. All right, so these two complex numbers are given to you. When we find the sum of these two complex numbers, that sum is called the resultant. So to find the resultant, all we have to do is add these two complex numbers together. And remember, you add like parts together. So add the real parts, which are 2 and negative 4, and then add the imaginary parts, which are 3 and 2. So 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. And um, 3 plus 2 is 5. So then this is the resultant. This is uh, the sum of the two vectors. Now, what we want to do is graph... Uh, the sum of the two um, complex numbers. Um, what I want to do is now graph all three. I want to graph the two given um, complex numbers, and I want to graph the resultant as position vectors in our complex plane. Okay, I'm going to graph the first one, 2 plus 3i. 2 is the real part, 3 is the imaginary part. So then this complex number determines the position vector that terminates at the ordered pair 2 comma 3, right? So... Let me do that for us. So about right here, guys, is uh, the position vector that's determined by 2 plus 3i. Next, I'll go for negative 4 plus 2i. So negative 4 on the real axis, positive 2 on the imaginary axis. Gives us this um, position vector. And finally, the resultant, which is negative 2 plus 5i. So negative 2 and then 5i. Uh, five on the imaginary axis. So there we have it, everybody. We have all three uh, position vectors um, graphed. Awesome. All right, we want to derive the relationships among x, y, r, and theta. So here I've drawn a complex number, x plus y, i, in our plane that corresponds to a vector, o, p. Okay, it's a position vector, o, p with direction angle theta and magnitude r, the following relationships among x, y, r, and theta can be verified. Notice that x is equal to r times cosine of angle theta. You can verify this because um, cosine of theta, by the diagram here, cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. It would be x over r. So it would be x over r. The r's would cancel, and you'd be left with x. x is equal to x. That is definitely true. Furthermore, y is equal to r times sine of theta. I invite you to verify that by looking at the diagram. Um, r, which is the magnitude of our vector, um, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. We developed that idea that notion in a previous lesson.
And finally, the direction angle theta must satisfy tangent theta equal to y over x. Of course, as long as x is not equal to 0. Now, I would invite you to keep this information really, really handy in your notes. Make sure you do not forget this information there, all right? Now, what I would like you to do is to substitute x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sine theta in for x and y in that complex number. So then this would give us r cos theta plus r sine theta Uh, this is the imaginary part, though. I, like this. Now, keep going. You would have, let's see, um, factor out the common factor of R, leaving you with cos theta plus, let's write it like this, I sine theta. Okay? Actually, there's shorthand for this. Um, this is the same thing as saying R cis theta. Okay? So this, ladies and gentlemen, r cis theta, which also means r times cos theta plus i sine theta, is what's called trig, trigonometric or polar form for a complex number. Okay, the trigonometric or polar form of a complex number x plus y i is r cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so sometimes this is abbreviated as, um, I'll say or, um, R cis theta. Many times I'll use that abbreviation for this, okay? Now, um, a few things about this. Um, R is the absolute value or the modulus of the complex number. Some more terminology for us. So R here in polar form, R is the absolute value or the modulus of the complex number x plus yi. And theta is called the argument of the complex number. Here, theta is chosen to be an angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Um, any coterminal angle uh, with theta could also work as well. But we choose theta to be something between 0 and 360 degrees. Check out this example, everybody. Example 2. Write the following complex number in a rectangular or standard form. Right now, it's written in po uh, polar form or trigonometric form, and uh, we want to convert it back to standard or rectangular form. Okay, so then this is going to be equal to 10 times, now cosine of 135 degrees is negative root 2 over 2, sine of 135 degrees is positive root 2 over 2, then distributing the 10 gives us negative 5 root 2 plus uh, 5 i root 2. This is standard form f or rectangular form for this complex number. Okay, example three. Write each complex number in trig or polar form. Okay, so this first complex number is in standard form, also called rectangular form. We need to convert it to polar form, also called trigonometric form. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in order to write a number in trigonometric or polar form, you need two things. R, which is the modulus or absolute value, and you need theta, the argument. Let's find R first. So remember, R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So in this case, R is equal to the square root of 8 squared plus negative 8 squared. So it is equal to the square root of 64 plus 64, which is 128, which can be simplified as 8 root 2. So this is R, okay, everybody? This is what R is. Now I need theta. Now theta is the argument, and it must satisfy the following. Tangent of theta must be y over x, which in this case is negative 8 over positive 8, which is negative 1. Tangent of theta is negative 1. Now, I want you to think about your unit circle. In, on your unit circle, tangent of theta is negative in quadrants 
um, two or four. I had to think about that for a second. Tangent of theta. Tangent is negative in quadrant two or four. So theta is either in quadrant two or it's in quadrant four. Now you have to be very careful here. Is it quadrant two or quadrant four? Which one? Well, look at x and y. Your x value is positive. Your y value is negative. x value is positive. y value is negative. That forces me to be in quadrant number four. Okay, so I know for sure we're quadrant four here. Okay, furthermore, I use a reference angle in quadrant one to figure out the answer. I know that theta prime is what we called it right in class. Theta prime is 45 degrees. How do I know that? Because in quadrant one, tangent of 45 degrees is one, right? But in quadrant four, I must be thinking about 300 15 degrees. That is to say, 45 degrees from 360. So I know, therefore, this implies that theta is 315 degrees. All right. Now that I have my argument and my modulus, I can write down the answer. So 8 minus 8i eight is uh, 8 root 2, that's r times cosine of 315 degrees plus i times sine of 315 degrees. If you want shorthand notation, you can write 8 root 2 cis uh, 315 degrees. All right, cool deal, you guys. Let's do another example, all right? This time they're giving you the number, the complex number negative 15. Now I know negative 15 doesn't look like a complex number to a lot of people. Uh, some people would say this is an integer or a rational number or, a, or a, uh, a real number and all of that is correct, but it's also a complex number because negative 15, if you want, can be rewritten as negative 15 plus zero i. Okay, so you can see your x, x value is negative 15 and your y value is zero. All right, let's find, uh, we got to find two things, r and theta. So r is equal to the square root of negative 15 squared plus 0 squared, which is basically just uh, the square root of 225, which is 15. So r is 15. Okay, now theta must satisfy that tangent of theta is equal to y over x, which in this case is 0 over negative 15, which is zero. Now, tangent of theta, tangent is zero um, at two locations, uh, between zero degrees and 360 degrees. Tangent is zero at zero degrees, and it's also zero at 180 degrees. Now, I want you to notice where you are in the plane here. Let me see if I can draw you a picture really quickly. In our plane, you have the number negative 15. Now, where is negative 15? Negative 15 is over here on the negative x-axis. So the position vector would be something like this, like that, right? That's the position vector. So we know just by looking at a visual of our complex number graphed in the plane, we know the angle must be 180 degrees, not zero degrees, all right? So we know theta must be 180 degrees. All right, I have everything now to write my answer. Negative 15 is the same thing as 15 times cosine of 180 degrees plus i times sine of 180 degrees. Perfect. If you'd like shorthand notation, no, shorthand notation, it'd be 15 times cis 180 degrees. Pretty cool. All right, everybody, I know this was a short lesson, but it is what it is. It's pretty short, but it's fun. So um, this is the end of this section, and I'll catch you in the next one, which will be 8.3, the product and quotient theorems. All right, everybody, see you later.